All right, good evening, everybody. You in the blender with your boy, Big Mo. And my special guest this evening is Miss Betty Bradley Branch, Albion citizen, longtime residents. And as a tribute to Black History Month and uh, uh, working with the Community That Cares Task Force, we're going to get a little interview going. So if you will, I'd like to introduce everybody to Mrs. Bradley Branch. How are you doing this afternoon? I am doing great, and I'm glad that I have you here. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. So uh, as a part of Black History Month, uh, the Community That Cares Task Force is interviewing uh, prominent citizens in Albion, African-American citizens, of course. And you are top on my list, and I would like to get some information and share some of your history with my viewers. So if you can start off by telling me your beginnings in Albion and what you remember. My beginning in Albion was being a child born, raised on Washington Street. Okay, so you was born and raised in Albion, huh? Yes. How many brothers and sisters did you have? Uh... Two sisters and two brothers. Okay. Oldest, youngest, what what position did you fit in? What position? I was the middle one. Oh, you was the middle child, I huh? I was the middle. Ooh, so yes. be best of both worlds, the the top and the bottom, and huh? And the tomboy. <laughs> oh, you was a tomboy? I was a tomboy. Okay. Tell me a little bit about that. How, how, how would you say and describe yourself as being mm -hmm. a tomboy? Being a tomboy, I would get out work in the garden. Um... I didn't mind doing part of that. When I was being punished, I had to go pull potatoes or something like that. <laughs> One thing I did not like was trying to learn how to wring a chicken's neck. Oh, you didn't like pulling? I didn't, I didn't like that. I would run. You'd run from wringing the chicken's <laughs> neck, huh? Yes, I would. Would you run from the chicken when he got on the table with that rice and corn? <laughs> uh, no, because my brother would sit next to me, always sit next to me, and he would say, you know, Betty, that food ain't no good. You really don't want any of it. <laughs> Try to get your plate, uh, huh? He got the whole plate. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about growing up in Albion, and what time era was that? This was in the, uh, I would say, in the latter 40s and through the 50s. I graduated in 1960. Okay. Uh I should have graduated in 61, but because of then you could go to school when you were four years old. Oh, so you got in there so early. So I got at born on Christmas. I got in um, by taking a test. Oh, okay. And passed. Mm -hmm. All right. So they got, they let you get in and get out early, huh? Yep. All right. Tell me a little bit about your childhood and, and the schooling when you went or when you were young in Albion. When the schooling I went to, I would I was very ambitious. Trying to learning as much as I could, I would have all kinds of things. I love to shoot marbles and <laughs> and, and uh, play ball and and riding boys' bicycles. I learned on a boys' bicycle oh, up, yeah. back, up to the uh, Holland Park, okay. as we know knew it then. It was West Ward. Okay. Everybody loved West Ward. That's where all the kids That's went. That's where all the kids went. Okay, how diverse was that park when you were growing up, as far as race was concerned? When it was primarily, I would say, um, it was black. Okay. But all shades of black. All we, were, we were multicolored kids. Okay. Uh -huh. Which we didn't mind that at all. Okay. We would take up for each other. Anybody get in a fight, we're going to help them. Anybody. Mm-hmm. So uh, as far as race is concerned, what would you say the makeup was uh, of the city when you were growing up in the 40s and 50s as far as uh, ratio and white white to black uh, citizens? I would say if I looked uh, around this middle section here, was, I would say it was multicolor. Okay. Because starting with that Rumpel Street, no, Erie Street, and then working its way. I remember when the ri river uh, went through Erie Street. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it went through the street, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And if you stand in the river, in the, in um, um, Erie, in the middle of the road, you could hear the water. Oh, okay. Sometimes <laughs> when you see water floating, the water, the river is still there. That's why it's very difficult to plant or build a home with a basement because it's going to be flooded. Right. The water runs uh -huh. through it, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Who were your friends growing up? And tell me about some of the people uh, that may still be alive here in Albion that grew up with you in the 40s, 50s, and 60s in Albion that you can remember. I hate to say this, but there's so many of them that have passed away. Well, of course. And the ones that 
are still around. Um, we live in Lansing, Alvin, Flint. All over Hamazoo. the place. Yes. Uh, Henry Gamble was one of my best buddies. Oh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about Henry Gamble. Henry Gamble. We would, we, if there was a dance, him and I used to always dance together. Okay. Irene would say, go get her. <laughs> but we, I uh, mean, you're talking we, about Irene that cuts the hair at the barbershop. Yes. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's one of my, my next uh, candidates for an interview. Yes, I love them dearly. Okay. Um, and we were always friends with her and her sisters. And um, I hated to see her go. I really did. Okay. And Leora was one of my best buddies, too, because I would say even before she passed, I... Would what was Leora's last name? She was a gamble also? Yep. Okay, that was Irene's sister? Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't know. I just wanted the uh -huh, viewers to yeah, know who you were was, talking about. Yeah, because um, Leora was a hop. She, you know, she married... They We called him Hobson. He could play some basketball. Oh, okay. What was his first name? Uh, Robert. Robert Hobson. Mm -hmm. Say he was the basketball star. Yes, and Walt Crum. Walt Crum lived right up next to the church. And now, he, would, would Walt Crum be related to uh, Darius Crum and Ty Crum and all of them? Uh, would, yes, that was their uncle. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on who mm -hmm. you were talking about. See, yeah. I didn't get here. Uh -huh. I didn't get a chance to meet all of those great people, mm -hmm. but I know some of the descendants mm -hmm. of them, and I want to associate some of the people that you're bringing all of them back. I grew up with uh, Carmen. Okay, with your daughter. Yeah, Carmen. Carmen mm -hmm. Thomas. Okay, yes, I mm -hmm. had dealings with Carmen. She's a very mm -hmm. smart. Because one uh, of them wanted to lady. marry her, and she said, "She, you can imagine how many different people would say something to him, but all of them were close together. Okay, all of them would still, when they come to town, they'll look, and they know whose car belongs to who or whoever, and they gonna stop by the house. They oh yeah, gonna by come by house. and pay their respects, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's what family and friends do. Yes. So and, tell me about some of your work after high school and some of your college days. Okay, at the high school, uh, my senior year, we had um, a year before then, um, Elvin decided to have a uh, city council group. Huh. And uh, that year, I was on the city council. I was chosen to be the student, the black student on, on the, the city, city council. council. So were you an actual member of the actual city council or just a school thing? It was a school, but a combination because I would sit right with them. Oh, okay. Each one of us would sit there and we go through the procedures and understanding why. We learned more about business. Well, business and history and all of that was just like a big part of me. Right. Because I love doing research. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I do really love research. Um, I would say the Goodwill Singers. They were, uh, they, we were really good. I couldn't sing it. I couldn't <laughs> hold a <it> tune. But, <laughs> but I was with them and uh, my dad's brother was the, um, he was the bus driver for the Goodwill Singers. His name was Fred Lee okay. Smith. But um, yes, they were very good. I you saw some of the pictures with me. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of Albion history out of you. This is going to be so awesome to show the uh, the viewers and the people of the community mm -hmm. uh, some of the rich history. And if I could just pan around so you guys could see all of these pictures of her family, and you know, it's just so much history in this one room. And I just thought it would be awesome to come in here and interview her for the podcast. So. Moving past uh, your college, what did you go to school for? Business. You went to school for business and you mm -hmm. got your degree, I'm sure. Uh -huh. uh, what was your first job after college? Oh, after, well, when I was at, um, the last one I went to was um, Nazareth College in Kalamazoo. Okay. I had all nuns and boy, did I love that. You had nuns? Nuns, they taught that, <laughs> okay. mm, they taught that school. Okay. But it was really great. I mean, they took us to the stock market. We learned how to, how to read and understand stock. We went to see like a Dow Jones and they explained all of those things and what to look for and to learn that, you know, uh, land is very important. If you have it, keep it. Right. Hold on to it because you don't know what's going to come down the road. And we're seeing it as adults how important that is. I mean, a lot of people say, well, I don't want that. I don't want to do it. Learn what you can. I would tell anybody. Learn what you can. Uh -huh, because they will see me now. You still driving tractors and things like that. I say, <laughs> yes, I love it. You love it. That's your, mm -hmm. that's your history. That's your past. Mm -hmm. uh, so speaking of owning land, uh, 
I remember you mentioning that your family owned a whole block in Albion. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay, I remember, okay. When you turn the corner off Eaton Street, as soon as you turn the corner, it was the Stone family, um, and they were from the South, Tennessee, I believe. And uh, some of them I have forgotten. The Shorts. Okay. Uh-huh. And their family was the Warrens. My grandfather owned a duplex. And for a while, we were down on one side. Uh, my mom, my dad, grandpa left the house to my mom. Okay. Okay. But we soon grew out of the house, children-wise. Right. And so um, they, my mother... Um, Bought a house across the street my, when my grandpa died. His name was John Hughes. Okay, John Hughes. John Hughes was a little short man. But anyway, <laughs> he was smart, though. He, he was, was smart, huh? smart. As a whip, huh? Uh-huh. He invested in land. He had to have some sense. Yes, because um, I would say 15 years ago, my first trip to the South. And um, I went with Pauline Story. Okay. And Pauline Story said, come on. I, I say, it's hot down here. Uh, it's hot down here. <laughs> so we stopped and went into, I think it was a J.C. Penney store, and we sat in the air conditioning. Because once you get used to air conditioning, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. Yeah, get on. I bet my dad lives in Tennessee, and I went down there one year, and it was so hot, it looked like it was raining heat. <laughs> <laughs> so you know exactly what yes, I'm saying. Yes, I do. <laughs> but I, um, it was nice to find somebody that could take me to where... My fi family was even down there. Yeah, get a part of your history. Right. See where you come from. We, they took us to um, one of my great aunt's house. And she had a modern home. They built homes down there. They had a two-story home with the balcony around it. Okay. Uh -huh, that was their, all of their dad's house. Okay. And so we went there. Um, my dad's, um, my mom's brothers and sisters all of them there was 11 of them all of them went to college wow mm -hmm. they went to college and was One that them, the 60s or what what, what well decade? that was in the um i would say that was in the 50s wow mm -hmm. the whole family mm -hmm. 11 people and that's he amazing had a brother himself uh, grandpa john and he had 11 kids they had a trout farm right in the front yard where they raised trout oh okay uh down the road he owned part of that land, so he had a cemetery. It was a huge cemetery. Oh, wow. It wasn't a plaque. Just a dirt. It was a cemetery. Oh, okay. And um, I took pictures of all of that, took pictures of all of their kids and everything. They Some taught in Flint. But it, it's so much, and now everybody wants to sit down and talk, say, we want to go south. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I say, but... Uh, you better get a hotel. <laughs> you better get something because I can't deal with that heat, huh? I can't deal with that heat. No, I know no, that's no. right. It was rough. And I would see cars down there when I was there. Oh, raggedy, beat up cars, but they all had air conditioning in them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So that's that's an amazing story. And I was just sitting here thinking when you told me your uh, your relatives down south had a trout farm. Uh, fish is brain food, mm -hmm. so that might explain why eleven of your your relatives went to college. They ate a lot of fish down there, I'm sure. So that's mm -hmm. a, that's an amazing story. So uh, after college, uh, you eventually got married. Tell me about your marriage and uh, your first kids, and you know, give me some of that history. Well, and when we, when most of us we graduated from high school, and eventually each one of us married off. Um, the Atchison lives right up the street. The Bells in the up the street. Um, house from house to house, house around. You could you could tell everybody, even the river. Let me tell you, the Kalamazoo River. What was funny? The unions. They had three boys. Okay. The three boys on oh, two of the boys and my son. Okay. They would climb the trees and jump into the river, dive off like tires. And <laughs> that was something they did as kids, huh? Uh huh. They did it. Uh huh. Yeah, I know it's a lot of history with the unions. Didn't he own the cleaners and the barbershop in town, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, their, grand, their, their dad, Moe's Union's cleaners, right. Yes, indeed. I've, and, I've, I've, I've researched some of that history. That's amazing mm -hmm. that you lived through that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead, finish. Let me see who else had me. 
Oh, my dad's brother taught school over at um, the Bo Ed Center in Battle Creek. Oh, okay. Uh huh. My um, his oldest brother, he used to um. He was in the car selling them. You know, he worked for um, Bob Fromm, Buick, Cadillac, all of them. Okay. So one day when, we, when my kids were in college, he said oh, to the dealership, "We got you got to do something. He said, because I know you're tired of driving these kids around. <laughs> yeah, when I got up there, it was a Chevette. You remember those little Chevettes? I remember Chevette? them Chevettes that came out in the early 80s. Well, that's when Carmen got her first car. Okay. Oh, I was so happy I didn't have to drive no more. <laughs> she was scooting around in that little oh, Chevette. She was cab driver. She she had to drive everybody around. That was really she, great. She probably had fun doing it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Sleepy and Joe, they had kids along with me. Okay. And they ended up with a Chevette. Oh, they got them uh -huh. a Chevette, huh? Uh huh. Got so used to they riding with her, they wanted one. Uh huh. <laughs> so, and that was. A, it's amazing to know that that car back in them days was like two thousand dollar. Cheap. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody can get one. Yeah, but and they they had to get a job to pay the insurance. I know that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of jobs back then, especially around Albion. Y'all had all kind of jobs. Uh -huh. So tell me a little bit about your employment. My employment, my first employment. Oh, I have worked for. The dime stores, I think I ate my way through the dime store downtown. <laughs> eating chocolate. So you ate your way through that job, huh? <laughs> uh -huh. I worked at McGraw Edison in engineering. Uh, Is that in Albion? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Those right are out all, on Clark Street. Those were all old biz businesses that were here in the 50s and 70s. And, mm hmm Okay. Um, they were the first ones to hire so many black people from the South oh, in the okay. factory. It was a big migration from the South with the jobs Oh, being. yes. Uh-huh. Okay, so mm -hmm. you lived to see all of those people that the families have been here since the 60s, mm -hmm. but you knew when they came up here from the South to get those mm -hmm. jobs, so it was like a big cultural change and a lot of slang language. I interviewed Howard Swinton the other day, and he was telling me about how he came here from South Carolina mm -hmm. and how the, uh, the, 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 uh, the language barrier was difficult for him because he had that Southern drawl. Yes. So you did, did, you, uh, did you grow up with Howard in that era too? Was he a yeah, part of it? Yeah, Howard lived. Not too far from where he, you know, up on Chestnut Street. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. But, um. So you say you were a tomboy. You climbed trees and all sure that. Sure did. <laughs> mm -hmm. I climbed to, to keep from getting the lady named Miss Simmons. Live in that little cul-de-sac around there. Uh-huh. Right around the corner. And I did something wrong. She said, I'm going to tell your daddy. I'm <laughs> going to tell your mama. You know, I climbed the tree. Got up on the roof and I sat up there on the roof. <laughs> so I wouldn't have to get a whoop. <laughs> How long did you uh, stay up there? <laughs> well, I, before dark, I come down because they kept saying, you won't get a whoop in the weather. You stay up there all night, spend the night or whatever. <laughs> when you come down, it's mm -hmm. going down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this end of Cass Street down through here was primarily white. Okay. Um, all of Cass, majority of Cass was kind of mixed. And then you could, when you got up by the park, mm -hmm. and that's when the colors changed. Okay, that's when it went a little, got a little dark over there, mm -hmm. huh? A little shade now, over that there. That street around here, uh, um, Eaton Street, Cass Street. Cass? No, 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 Michigan Street. Oh, Michigan Avenue. Where the game, where the ball game is, and that's where my heart goes out. Because when Lynn would say, "Betty, you want to come here?" Yep, here I am. I'm coming. And what do you way. need? Uh -huh. <laughs> that's your area, huh? Uh huh. Because my um, the white heads. The uh, banks, um, Gordon that just passed away, his family was from down there. Um, there was a Quonset hut, and at the end of Qu uh, Michigan and Cass Street, which Michigan and Elvin Street on Friday nights and Saturday nights. Miss Christine, she would be cooking. You can smell that food, you know, mm -hmm. after a dance or party. Oh, yeah, food everywhere, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be known for parties, food, and gambling. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I, shoot, if you wasn't home by a certain time, it's all on you. It's over, huh? It's up to party over, as they say. <laughs> so I want to ask you a couple questions about your kids growing up. Uh, which one of your kids was the, the meanest? Penny. Penny was the meanest kid. Why you say that? 
Penny just didn't, she didn't just take nothing from nobody. She'll, she'll whoop them up in a minute. Yeah, she'll get to it, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So which one of your kids was the smartest, would you say? Carmen would be, Carmen is more, was more active in the city, in the, anything. Cheerleading, you name it, they did it. She did. She was the most active. Very active. Okay, mm -hmm. so who was the most uh, attached to you at the hip? I would say um, Bill. Bill? Mm-hmm. That was your son, right? His name is Kyle, but Bill. Y'all call him Bill? Uh-huh. Everybody a, called him Bill. He and was he mama's was little always, boy? He was with, with uh, my Uncle Fred. <laughs> cars. Always into cars. Oh, on yeah. Saturdays. My grandfather had a garage. And okay. it used to be on uh, down. It was first up on um, Austin Avenue near where our old grocery store was. And then he sold it to the Macintoshes. And okay. then he drove bought down further going towards the marshall and it used to be called oak grove and he had a garage where he one of the pits up under the ground uh-huh changed he, the oil and stuff mm -hmm. okay i mean he could they, they could take some old cars apart and put them back together that's what they did out there mm -hmm. huh yeah it must have been a fun time it was so uh i know carmen i've done work with her and i've actually uh attended some of her seminars uh, tell me about the book your great-granddaughter wrote. Well, you know, they surprised me. I know that she was really active because she came over. They came over for Thanksgiving. We had Thanksgiving together. Okay. And uh, they are, they always go through the house, especially the little, little ones, <laughs> and say, Grandma, what you got, what you got? Can I see it? And they would go downstairs. Well, their fun place was down in the family room. Okay. And... Um, they were their mind was always eager and every time they come they wanted to, can i have this can i have that can i show this when they had show and tell time right at school they would show them all of these things and they were amazed that these kids can remember these things and then want to come back and spend the night sometimes they'll come in there there's three of them in that room there's two in this one and something they, <laughs> they everywhere huh? they everywhere <laughs> didn't bother me anything i know that's the joy of having kids around mm -hmm. you, see your, you see your legacy uh so uh is it anything that you would like the viewers to know about mrs betty that you haven't mentioned in this interview you know i had a lot of um very affluent people that I worked with when I worked with Eaton Corporation. Okay. Uh, a lot of times um, I would have to go um, all over because we were in prototype parks and things like when that. When you say all over, do you mean all over Michigan? All, all, over, all over the United States. Okay, that's what I wanted I to get to. I had to go to customs, me and one engineer, we went to custom to bring in some brand new cars off the ships. Okay. And I had to take an engineer with me so he could drive the, the new one back. And the proving ground is over in Homer. So we would go out there and I would go out as far as to Indian reservations. Um, um, so many different things. And we came up with, um, I was going to show you. I have to find it for you, maybe before I leave. Okay. The um, chairman of the board over there. And he would come up and he would say, Betty, how about doing this? And how about doing that? And I said, okay, let's try it. And I got on the racetrack one day with <laughs> one of the race drivers. <laughs> he said, now, I want you, now just be calm and listen. Just put your strap this here and put the other strap here. Locked you and, in. And yeah, lock you in. And you're going to, you. we're going to bank this wall. I mean, we're going to bank it. I said, okay. Because I was trusting him. Right. We went around, and I swear I was upside down. Like that. <laughs> I was speechless. <laughs> Going real fast. Oh, huh? his name was Ralph, and Ralph was really good. He, oh. was, he was good. Did you enjoy that that adrenaline rush? Yes, and I enjoyed the thought of doing things. And one of my best uh, gentlemen that I worked with over in Marshall, his name was Morris Stahlberg. And he would come by, and the first thing he'd do, he would always have on his bib over her arms. <laughs> he was one of the very affluent okay. people in Marshall. 
and he'd say, hi, Betty, how you doing? And no matter where he would be, he'd come up, you know, and hug me. And um, he was just there. When I bought a house, he would come by and say, you, him and his son, he said, you, got, you need anything done? And so I said, I've got to clean it out. He said, you got a couple of keys I can have. And I gave him the keys. His whole group cleaned that whole house. I mean, it was very, very, very um, wonderful to be able to go back and say, you know, I don't like this person. And I liked everybody. Right. And no matter what I did, what I fixed. And for Christmas this year, my old supervisor, he called me up. He said, Betty, I miss you so much. He said, I'm so proud of you. He said, because you went on and on and you kept on going and working with people. And, you know, that kind of followed through because I worked for uh, Auto Owners Insurance in Lansing. Okay. And we were always up in the Indian area in Michigan and uh, spending the night or doing something. And uh, they would say, Betty, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. So when it was time for me to retire or do anything, I'd say, but I'm, I'm just home by myself. What do you want me to do? Well, you can come in and help us sometimes. So I would do that. Okay. So you had time to spend with just people you work with over the years and keep, keep that connection. Uh -huh. That's a wonderful thing. I bet you really enjoyed that. Yes, I did. Okay. That's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing. Well, uh, I'm going to have to come back and get some more of this uh, rich history uh, that you have with Albie, and I'm so excited about being able to interview you and capture uh, your story for people to see. I know they're, they're going to be very, very uh, excited to hear some of that rich history and growing up in Albion in the 40s and 50s. And, and I'm honored to be able to share that during uh, Black History Month, especially uh, with all of the stuff that's going on uh, nationally mm -hmm. with the coronavirus and, mm -hmm. you know, you being of age, you have to be especially careful. So I'm hoping you enjoyed my company and coming mm -hmm. over and spending some time with you. And uh, I will get this posted as soon as possible. Uh, one last thought. Uh, if you could change anything about Albion, uh, anything, just pick something that's a passion for you, what would it be? I would like to, one thing, continue your education. Right. Um, there is so much out there that you may think you know, but you don't know. Ask questions. Always be open. And like I tell people, and they say, well, you wasn't home. I said, well, I had to go over there. I got to go dig this. I got to go do this and do that. But I love it. Right. And don't don't never say what you can't do. Say until you try. Huh? That's right. You got to try. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you for uh, sharing that uh, history with me and uh, allowing me to come in and uh, have this conversation with you. I look forward to doing this again mm -hmm. at some point in the future as a follow-up. Uh, the Community That Cares Task Force sponsored this uh, interview for Black History Month, Albion. And so mm -hmm. I definitely want to highlight citizens like you that have a rich history of growing up in Albion and being African-American and telling about some of the exposure. And from what I gathered in this interview, it was a lot easier to live in Albion racially in the 50s and 60s than it is now. It is. And, you know, that's strange for us to be able to say that when we should have been progressing as opposed to degressing. I want to thank you for the interview. Uh, Y'all been in the blender with your boy, Big Mo. And Miss Betty Blanchard. Did I say that right? Branch. Branch. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Y'all, let's mm -hmm. chop it up. Have a good day. Mm 